Hi, I'm Roland Worcester. I'm from Intel's desktop group. I'm responsible for display and media. I've spent the last two and a half years bringing HDR to the marketplace. And today we want to talk about one of our new HDR displays that hits a thousand nits of brightness in a local dimming solution. So what's important to recognize is that when you're outside and you're looking at a scene and the sun may be shining on a car, for example, and the sunlight is reflecting off that car, there's 100,000 nits of brightness on the, on the metallic shine on that paint or the reflectivity of a seal, silver metallic area of the car. Whereas if you're looking at the shadows around the wheel, it may only be 10 nits, for example. So you have this huge dynamic range, and if you were to go look at the sun itself, that may be 10 to 100 million nits of brightness. If you take a photograph of that image, or you have a PC game representing that image, you're running around first-person shooter, and you're, you're going around this vehicle in the daylight with the sun reflecting off it, and you display that on a regular display, you only have between a half a nit roughly because of the light leakage of a typical panel all the way up to 300 nits. So you have a contrast ratio that is only a thousand to one. What we're building here with HDR is displays that can achieve 20,000 to one or more as a dynamic range. And that is something that renders much, much more realistic real life imagery for photography, for video editing, content creation, movies that you want to watch, PC games, and a number of other usages. So for those of you wondering what a nit is that I talked about these LCD displays going from say half a nit to 300, it's an old measurement of how bright a candle is. So one candela is the brightness of a candle measured at one meter. And a candela is a nit. So we call them nits in, in nowadays because it's just easier. But if you have one nit, it's one candle at one meter. And so the displays, they're getting up to 10,000 nits uh, in the future, there's no one doing a 10,000 nit display at this point in time, but this is where we project we may get in 10 years time. If you want to measure the brightness of the ambient lighting around you, you can use an app on your phone. There's a free apps called Lux Meter and probably several other applications. And you just use your phone and measure the ambient brightness and I can measure this dark area here on the table and comes up at 20 nits or so. And uh, if I measure the brightness on my shirt here, it's coming up 96 nits. So I wanna start talking about the current state of the art hardware that is involved in a display that is an HDR10 capable display but one that uses global dimming, about 400 nits of brightness. And I want to explain what hardware is involved in this display, and then I'll talk about some of the new displays and the hardware that we're building into those. So this display here, you can see the bezel is, is slightly thicker at the bottom than it is at the sides and the top. And that's because the LED units are at the bottom of the display. This is the LED light bar is hidden under this bezel. Behind the entire screen is a plastic sheet that is called the light guide. And the LEDs shine upwards into this plastic LED light guide and that projects the light forwards. But you have one uniform brightness. So you can either turn the brightness up to maximum or you can turn the brightness down lower based on the scene that you're trying to display. But the, the constraint is you can only adjust the entire screen together. So for a bright area like this and a dark area like this, you can't adjust the brightness differently between these two. You have to have the same brightness for both of these zones. 
And this is what global dimming provides you on an HDR10 based display. As we move to this new technology, the advantage is we have local dimming zones. So we have an LED bar at the top and an LED bar at the bottom. And this is projecting into the same kind of light guide behind the panel, but the two LED bars are projecting light towards the middle. And the big difference here is these zones are independently controllable. So if we didn't have this bright area at the top, this big black area here, the LED light bar for this segment here would be able to project much, much lower levels and get a much darker black. Whereas in this segment here, where it's nice and bright here, your LEDs that are projecting upwards in this segment can be displaying at a much higher brightness. And then based on the actual video content on the screen, if you have a bright scene where snow or the sun is shining, you can turn the LEDs up to maximum brightness and portray that thousand nits of brightness to represent real life. And then if you have an area that's very dark, such as a nighttime scene where you want shadow details, and you don't want the light bleed that is common of LCD, you can achieve a much, much greater dynamic range by dropping the illumination of that segment of the screen while other segments of the screen are nice and bright. So I guess I should probably mention the proprietary nature of uh, some of this prototype hardware that we're using. The LCD panel is actually from a company called AUO, one of the six major LCD manufacturers. The backlight, the, the company that has built the backlight that enables the 16 zones of illumination is Young Lighting. And then the scalar chip, the, the big chip inside a monitor, is from MSTAR. And you can see with this wooden stand and the power supply outside, it's, it's still early stages at this point. We're also using uh, Microsoft Windows uh, Redstone version 3. This is the version that will come out later this year. This is now in public beta, so this isn't an Intel special version, but something that's available to everybody through the Insider program. This is Adobe Premiere uh, version 11.02, the version that works with the GH5 uh, camera. The, the video footage from the Panasonic camera is 4K30, 10-bit in the V-Log format. So this V-Log format is specifically designed for HDR. It captures 12 bits of dynamic range, compresses that into a 10-bit file structure, saved into a log format. And that's something that I'm adjusting for in Adobe Premiere Pro. So these adjustment layers here are applying color adjustments. If I turn off the color layers, you can see significant flattening of the file, that the colors coming from the camera are very, very dull, but then you adjust it for the, the log nature of the file. And this is how you do the HDR processing. With the Lumetri scope up here, you can see the brightness is peaking now. I can push the brightness up so that we can get closer to a thousand nits of brightness. So this is much, much more realistic. Uh, real life usages where the white of the bald, the reflection on the helmet, and then some other scenes of, of just general life outside is well above 300 nits. Obviously one of the challenges of seeing this on your PC at home watching this video is that you're unlikely to be watching this at a thousand nits on an HDR display. So all of the scenes that we're showing of the video editing of the games, you really can't see how amazing this looks in 10-bit with this white color gamma, the incredible dynamic range and the contrast ratio because typically you're going to be seeing this on a 300-nit display with a thousand to one contrast ratio with the sRGB color gamma which compresses what we're shooting here and what we're seeing here today when you watch it on your monitor at home. So HDR is now available and, and you've probably seen it in televisions. 
But one of the really big differences with a television and a PC monitor is that in the PC monitor space, we are not power limited. And if you were to project a scene like this to a television, an HDR television, that might be a thousand nits of brightness television, it's going to drop the brightness significantly because it's, it's power limited and about 70% of the screen here is very, very high brightness and the TV would not be able to deliver enough power to do that. So it has to tone map everything down to a lower brightness. But this PC monitor here, it's not being power limited, so it can project the full brightness of the game all the way up to 100% of the screen. Thanks for joining us today on this short tech demo. We have many, many more innovations in the pipeline, and I look forward to sharing those with you in the future.